Hi, this is Greg. Look for my book, The Agile Brand, on Amazon or on my website at theagile.world. Welcome back to The Agile World. This is Greg Kilstrom. In the last episode, I started talking about storytelling and agile brands. I talked about how making a, a I talked about having an educational component to your branding and messaging helps other people not only relate to it, but gives them something that they can share with others that makes them feel part of the in crowd, an insider, uh, so they can share that with others. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of making the stories authentic. I think we hear a lot about generational things like millennials wanting authentic brands and, and I'm sure Gen Z as well. But I think everybody wants authenticity in their brands. Everyone is looking for something that they can relate to. Everyone is looking to align their values with brands, even us older folks like, like myself. A recent survey by Cohn and Wolf found a large majority, so about almost 90% of consumers, felt it was important for brands to act with integrity at all times. This means a lot about authenticity. It means aligning your, your stories, aligning your actions with what your values are, and clearly articulating what your values are. If people don't really know what you stand for, you can say things and it just doesn't really ring true. I think there's a lot of very serious um, examples of this. I think there's some social issues. I've mentioned a few things like Nike and Starbucks taking social stands. But sometimes uh, there's some, you know, there's there's just some uh, some ways to be authentic without uh, without taking such a serious stand. Uh, in the UK, uh, a little while ago, I forget um, I, I forget which year it was exactly, but KFC. So I seem to be using a lot of food examples in, in the last few episodes. But um, at first I was on cars, now I'm on food. But um, in the UK, KFC actually ran out of chicken. So I don't, I don't know if you heard about this or not. So um, kind of unfortunate for a restaurant chain that solely specializes in chicken. So what do you do? Um, they really couldn't do a whole lot. They didn't really have a whole lot to sell. I mean, they have they have some other things here and there, but um, sides, I guess, or, or something. But they ran out of chicken. So what, what does KFC do? Um, I recommend you Google this, the, the ad. It's, it's a lot more funny visually, but they rearranged the, uh, the letters in their, in their name to FCK, period, and just said, you know what? Basically, in front of the world, they took out an ad. They said, basically, we screwed up. Um, we have no chicken. Uh, we'll be open again soon. I mean, essentially, that's what they said. And, you know, you got you to gotta admire the, the, the real message that they had there. It's, it's authentic. It's on brand. Um, you know, they're not, they're not a super serious um, organization, uh, um, you know, anyway. Um, but they were just honest. They were authentic. They just told the truth. I think Domino's did some things like this um, as well, maybe to a slightly lesser degree, but they made a big deal about changing their recipes. They didn't say, oh, we're just making be making it better. They said, eh, a lot of people don't really like what we make, so we're going to change it. We're going to make it better. I think that takes a lot of guts. I think it takes some some honesty. Certainly, as with any large corporation, they made a calculation that probably if they didn't do that, they were going to continue to lose market share. But at the same time, they didn't have to do it. They could have done something safer. Instead, they said, you know what? We're going to make things better. We know there's problems, but let's let's do something about it, and we want you to try it. They involve their customers in part of their part of their improvement. I think it's kind of interesting that that a company would do that, especially such a large one. I think there's a lesson for all of us in that. And, you know, you may not, as a perhaps a professional services B2B company, you may not want to say, hey, we screwed up. But I think telling an honest story, being honest in your approach of when you talk about work that you've done or experiences that you've had, I think being honest and authentic in everything is always going to benefit you. In the next episode, I'm going to continue talking about storytelling and agile brands. I'm going to talk about how making it relatable is valuable. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. 
If you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful, please rate the show on iTunes or contact me through my website at theagile.world. You can find my books, The Agile Brand and The Agile Web on Amazon and on my website at theagile.world. 